Hi, beautiful souls. It's Sadhana, back after a bit of silence on YouTube. And I'm here today to start my 31 days of tarot. Bit of a late start, but I had wanted to do this earlier in the month and just didn't get around to doing it. So thank you, Ethany, for doing this again. Really appreciate it. And if you are not aware of what the 31 days of tarot is, for some reason, I will put a link to Ethany's original um, list in the description box below. The first question on the list <clears throat> is my major lesson for 2019. And I have been using on my altar two decks for the past couple of months. One is the Shimonette Tarot and one is the Margaret Peterson Tarot. And for my um, year ahead, I used the Shimonette with um, an oracle deck and also I also drew two Lenormand cards for each season and it turned out to be a pretty um, powerful and um, each of the decks that I chose really spoke well to each other so I'm still going back and forth and, and journaling more about that reading but I'm going to talk a little bit about the major card for the year as well as how the cards I've pulled in January have really um, really worked with that so first of all, today I pulled uh, the Lover's card. This is from the Shemonet Tarot. If you're not aware, I'm sorry, I don't have the box here. It's by Eden Gallanter, and it's a self-published deck available through her website. It's beautiful watercolors, and um, the guidebook is very, it's very different. It's not Rider Waite Smith based at all. It's very intuitive. Um, it's very much a self uh it's very much a deck that you're going to work with yourself. It's a deck of healing. It's a deck of looking uh, deeper into, um, of course, shadow work, uh, exploring your soul. Let's say that. So this card, the lover's card, has this beautiful tree in the background. And the reason I'm showing you that my draw for today is because this card is very similar to the card I pulled for my um, card for the year, which is um, oddly the Six of Swords. However, in this deck, the Six of Swords is really about weaving. It's about the spaces in between time. It's about the spaces in between movement. It's about the spaces in between thought. It's about really learning how to bring the best bits together and understand how everything fits. And when I go through this deck, I'll show you this because it's going to be in my um, decks for 2018. So I'll show you some of the pictures then. And of course, I can't find this card. All right. There it is, second to last on the bottom. Okay, so here's the card here, the Six of Swords. And so here we have three of the princes, and we have six swords. And this is about threes and sixes. It's very otherworldly, shall we say. And this theme has been coming up a lot for me lately. So when I chose my name for my business, Integrative Healing with Sadhana, it was, first of all, it's a very, very long name, and it was hard for me to choose a name for my business, but because I work in several modalities, of course I do readings, but I work as a Reiki master, I work as a Reiki teacher, um, I work with people with lots of yogic practices, um, the physical practice, the asana practices, meditations, yoga nidra is one of my passions. So I try to integrate the teachings from several disciplines, regardless, you know, if I'm doing a reading or if I'm working with somebody doing Reiki. And so for me, this was really a card about continuing to see how everything weaves together. And 
like I said, this theme has been coming up a lot. So a couple of days ago, I drew this card from the Margaret Peterson Tarot, which is the lover's card. And then I drew the lover's card today from the Chimonet. And the thing about the lover's card in the Margaret Peterson, I mean, this is such a beautiful card, but you can see that there is the snake coming up the center. You can see maybe, maybe not. It takes a while to actually focus on the images in this card. You've got a hand on either side and you've got um, the two sides of the face in the center of the card. And there's a heart in the blue hand and then there's an empty indent in the red hand. And usually um, the blue side is going to be the left, right? The feminine side, the lunar side, and the red is going to be the fiery masculine side. But in this card, it's switched. So all of these kind of cards have been coming up a lot for me lately about, about balance and working together and really kind of finding the perfect mix. You know, it's a bit like temperance, the alchemy of all of this work that I'm doing. So I will continue over this next year to explore how I can integrate these practices even more, share them in ways that are um, more relevant to people. So some, so those who are not comfortable with more esoteric practices, how can I integrate all of these teachings and make them accessible to more people? not just from a business perspective so I can grow my business, but so that I can touch people in new ways through videos, through through readings, different things that I might say somewhere, um, you know, out and about in the store or the bank lineup or something like that. So yeah, so that really is my theme for the year is this, is this real, um, I think she says in her guide back book, inter and extra and inter interpolation. And then if we look at this from um, an RWS perspective, the journey, it's about the journey, right? It's about journey moving forward, not really knowing exactly where you're going, but knowing that you're moving from rough waters to smoother waters. There's something positive ahead in the distance. So if I kind of go back and, and look at a, an RWS perspective, again, this really is about the process and not about the endpoint. And I am very happy to make that the center of my um, focus, the center of my teachings for this year. The card I pulled for January, I'm going to show you as well too, which is the four of wands which in this deck also is quite different but it has the same theme so I've been getting this kind of repeated message in different ways coming up over and over again have you ever um, collected twigs, you know, raw twigs to, to make a dream catcher or a chair or a frame, a twig frame or something like that. And you know, when you cut the twigs, they're very soft and they're pliable and you can create circles, you can create um, any shape you want really. And then over time you you will have a, a solid frame and it will, um, Again, this card is, there it is. This card is, um, here we go. So there's the four of staves, the four of wands. So it's very much a card of creativity, which is one of the um, aspects of the suit of fire and really learning to weave these pieces together to create a solid foundation. So I'm going to leave it with that because I'll show you more of those cards in a bit. So moving on to the second question. It is, what are your top five tarot decks of 2018? Either you purchased in 2018 or they were released in 2018. Most of mine were um, released in 2018, but I'm going to go back 
um, to one that wasn't that came into my collection and that is the Lime Strider Tarot. This is one of um, Ciola Thompson's decks and these are not in any particular order but I have found this deck to be very accessible for all kinds of um, readings, all kinds of people. The only time that it doesn't work is if um, the client has trouble with their eyes because it's the images are quite small, they don't fill up the whole space. But what this deck gives you is a lot of white space, um, not unlike the um, the Naked Heart Tarot. So in, if you have a bunch of cards on the table, you have, um, yeah, this beautiful space that really helps um, kind of clear up the story, you know, by, by actually giving physical, physical space. It's very subtle. It kind of um, weaves a uh, a line, I think she says this in her book, it weaves a line between this world and the other world. It is intuitive. Um, it is partially Rider Waite Smith based. And the colors are just beautiful. So here we have the Six of Wands. You can see we have the laurel wreath here. Thought he's a statue. Yeah. So this is definitely um, a deck that I will always use. And um, there's the Six of Swords in this deck. Yeah. And I love watery decks. I think that is something that I will continue to collect because the watercolor art just speaks to me. Um, it speaks to my soul. So let's go back to the Shimonette Tarot. So this is by um, Eden Gallanter. As I said, it is um, available through, Sh I think it's Shemonet.com. C-H-E-I-M-O-N. I will put it in the link below, Shemonet.com. <clears throat> and I do have a walkthrough of this deck on um, my YouTube channel. So if you want to look at the whole deck. The princesses and the queens in this deck are just, just beautiful. There are, you can see there's lots of different kind of ages, nationalities. It's super intuitive, super watery. Um, the guidebook is very small, but it's uh, potent. So in a few words, she gets her message across really um, clearly. There is a story that weaves its way through two of the suits. I think it's the swords and the wands. And so the story kind of kind of builds and um, it works. It's really, really beautiful. So if you're looking for more of an um, intuitive deck and you like this art, yeah. You will love it. I, this is if I if I get one of those. Um, I've seen people have the um, the boxes made by the artist. I think she's on Vancouver Island in Canada, and I have contemplated contemplated having her make a box for me. And if I do, it's going to be from this deck. Um, I may have to order another copy of this deck too because it is um, it is wearing because I'm using it a lot. So that is number two. Number three is Lily White. I also have a walkthrough of this on my website. Lily White has been, um, which way is up, which way is down? also worked really well. Um, it is feminine, okay, so you may, I don't know if I should say that. I mean, we all have softer and more active sides. Um, again, a watery, a watercolor deck, and there's a lot of nuance, a lot of subtlety. The guidebook is in French, so if you don't read French, um, you'll need to get somebody to translate it for you. 
and there are some cards that are not Rider Waite Smith based. So here we have 20, which um, is judgment, so transformation, um, beautiful butterfly. The uh, minors are more pippish, so if you like that in a deck. And this is, oh, it's upside down. This is a really cool card. This is the Seven of Swords. So the eagle here, I'm assuming, or the raven, or some other large bird, has taken the seven swords away, and one of them is being released. And the eagle is not sweeping back to get it, so he's taking those six swords away. Why? Why is he letting one drop? There's all kinds of really interesting questions that you can ask when the um, card kind of goes in a different direction. And that's what I love about the tarot. I love it when I have to inquire and ask, ask more, right? Look at this, it's a beautiful wheel card. We've got the sun, we've got the moon, we've got the guard in the seasons, we've got the web in the middle. There's just, there's just so much potential to read with these cards. And on the table, they look amazing. The colors are so beautiful. <laughs> Gorgeous queen. Okay, so yeah, so you can see all of those cards on the walkthrough on my website. And I am going to do another video about the Lily White because I have been working with it so much that I feel um, it deserves a little bit more time to share. And then, so that's one, two, three. Number four, these are in no particular order. This is uh, the Sawyer's Path Tarot. The reason that I love this deck, well, one, one thing I don't like about this deck is it's really slippery. It's easy to go flying around. But the thing I do love is the, the mix of, of ages of people. I, I love the gray hair on this woman who's holding the lion cub. I, I just find it's very, yes, and I do, I really like this too. So the wands, just like I talked about in the, in the Shemonette, so the four of uh, wands there is about the, the weaving of those twigs to make this solid foundation. <laughs> That's my puppy. So like I talked about in the Chemonette, the, the wands here are constructed, shall we say, um, to make a super strong foundation. So that's very pretty. Um, brilliant colors here. No white space, borderless. Um, they are glossy, but not super glossy. And this deck also gives thought, extra thought. So for example, this card, you know, I often think of this as a more happy face. She's very calm, she's, you know, she's contemplating what she's doing and she doesn't look great. So what I was saying, some of the faces in this deck, um, the expression is not what you would, or not what I would normally expect. And then you'll see, I believe it is in the suit of swords, most of the um, most of the pictures appear through a window, and then there's clouds on the outside. So yeah, this deck has been um, reading well, and it's colorful and it's fun, and there are um, there's. Hermes with the alchemy. Just let me see if I can. For the most part, I like all the cards in this um, deck. This is one card that I'm not really sure about. That is the, um, the giving and receiving card, the pentacles card. There are crystals. Look at this. If you like crystals, you'll like this deck too. And there's the back. So if you love crystals, you will like this deck. Oddly, crystals is not in the, um, the name 
of the deck. Yeah, so here's the Six of Swords, for example, in this deck, and you see it through a window. And you've got the, um, the light clouds on the outside and the sun. So, yeah, the positivity being reflected outside the frame. Um, yeah, really, really, um, it's working well. There's the Two of Wands. So that is the fourth one. And then it is really, really hard to decide what to do for the fifth deck. Um, because I've purchased a lot of decks in 2018. But I'm going to uh, have to, I can't not include this one. So this is the Sasurai Bito. Sasurai is a wanderer. Beautiful deck um, created by Stacia Barrington. Stacia Barrington. And it has shiny gold edging. Um, these are the backs. So we've got the moth and the bones on the back. I also bought her reading cloth, which is really nice. And so here's the chariot. This deck um, is right away Smith based, but there are um, a few cards that kind of go off in their own direction. So pretty much all of the decks I'm showing you are loosely right away Smith based. Um, yeah. The pages might be my favorite um, quartz in this deck. They're saucy, they're fun, they're cheeky. Um, yeah, the artwork here is kind of a blend of um, manga, you know, anime kind of um, art, and but some of them don't quite look that way. And this is really interesting, um, Ace of Swords. I'm not sure whether this is smoke or whether this is a cave. And so the um, the sword is cutting through the smoke. Actually, makes more sense if it's a smoke. If it's a smoke, if it's smoke. There's your Ace of Wands, the Emperor. This deck has um, been talked about a lot on YouTube, so I won't show you too many cards. Um, I'll show you a couple. Let's see, there's another page. They're just brilliant. They might be a bit cartoony for some people, but I really, I really like them. I like their attitude. Um, Okay, so quickly flipping through. There's a couple um, cards that I think are a bit weird in this deck, like this one, the Six of Pentacles, I think is a little strange. But overall, this deck reads, reads really well. Um, a lot, there's been a few decks that have, you know, the Four of Swords instead of resting. Um, are in a meditative posture and this works really really well for four of swords again this is a deck that has um, quite a few different ages of people and there are animals and like this queen of cups look at her isn't she lovely and the king of cups is also brilliant in this deck some of the miners are pippish, some are not. So there's the two of wands. And this is a beautiful six of swords coming up for a breath of fresh air. The swords are still there. She's very much aware of them. They are, um, they're not piercing her body, but they are definitely um, still very close. But can you just feel the, the energy of that breath of Finally, finally being able to take a breath. Um, this is the judgment card. So it meant to represent a cocoon. She has a blanket around her. And so the awakening, if you will, is um, very personal. Yeah. I'm sure you've seen other decks where the full card is... Uh, an old man, but 
this is great, right? Never too late to start again. So yeah, so those are, oh, and I just have to show the hermit card because it is really beautiful. It reminds me of my time in Japan. I spent several years in Japan in my 20s um, after I graduated from university. I lived in the country. Okay, so as I was saying, I lived in the countryside um, when I was in Japan. And I did a lot of walking and to get to, um, isn't that too bad? I can't remember the name of the hill. It might have been Askamura. I lived in the prefecture of Nara in a small town called Kashihara City, Kashihara Shi. And so um, the so Askamura was Aska Village was very close to where I lived. And so I'd go on these long, long walks and sometimes walk up this hill. And it was a beautiful place to sit. A lot of people went there for sunrise. I remember. Um, Sunrise New Year's Day is a big thing in Japan and, and going there. So this reminds me of um, my time in Japan. I have a lot of memories of, of those days. And this deck is very much um, a reflection of, you know, it has that kind of feel, Japanese art. Whether, um, and also, you know, like I said earlier, there's a... There's more than one style of art that's represented in this deck. Um, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. And I will carry on with question number three um, in the next video. So if you are signing up for now, stay well and namaste.